Hey, well, welcome. Um, I'm Paul Goldie, and today I'm interviewing a close friend of almost eight years now, uh, Daniel Mini Smee Monaghan. Uh, he's a sound engineer, audio producer. Daniel's worked on a wide range of projects, which is amazing seeing he's so young. Daniel has worked with voice actors for animation, artists to record music, and creating and producing new audio for games and much more. Firstly, welcome, Daniel. Ah, oh, thank you. Okay, after that long introduction, um, first of all, let me just let me start by asking, what firstly got you interested in music, and how young were you? Uh, ever since I was a kid, I've always sort of been musically inclined. I uh, was in a choir when I was younger, in the Australian National Youth Choir, uh, for a few years, and uh, from there I went on to uh, like high school band, where I played the tuba and euphonium, yes. uh, which is essentially just a small tuba. Uh, and then after that, I kind of dropped out because I lost interest in the academic side of it. But uh, I, when I was, it was about what, 2010, yeah. uh, so I was in year 10 in high school and I started listening to more electronic music. And then from there, it got me through to just mixing together on this crappy little software, like just music really badly done. And then from there, just on YouTube, I somehow stumbled across producing. And I just ever since then, I just wanted to make music and produce it and that sort of led through into the sound design and what I do with sound effects today. Now, um, you've got quite a setup at home. Where essentially did you start out with that? Okay, uh, it's a nice, I like it, it's a nice modest setup, but um, it's, the computer is the hub of it all, uh, for starters, and then from that it branches off into your DAC, uh, your DAC, which is a digital audio converter, which is a little box you'll see on every producer's table that has cables running in and out of it, and uh, that was the first thing yeah, it's the first like part of your studio, so that can interface with your computer and anything else you have lying around, like your keyboards and your equipment. Uh, from there, I got uh, a MIDI keyboard to control things and just to, to, for performance. And then I bought the microphone, the AT2020. Uh, and so you slowly just build on those basic aspects that you need for a studio. And I've also got guitars and a few other keyboards lying around. In the statement, practice makes perfect. How many hours have you roughly spent learning to become an audio producer and get to where you are now? Uh, it's hard to keep track of all the hours, but for the first six months, I was probably doing three hours a day, I guess, of just learning and watching and messing around in, in the software, which is FL Studio. And, uh, for, uh, you know, YouTube tutorials have been very helpful and blog posts and just anywhere I can talking to people, so I've talked to a few locals who have been audio engineers for a very long time. Practice Makes Perfect very much is the key here, and the the key thing I think to keep in mind is never stop being a student, no matter how good you get. Now, can you discuss any of the projects that you're currently working on? Uh, Alright, so the big one would be Project Sockjust, which is a, uh, a video game I'm doing sound design for. So, um, it's sort of George Orwell, uh, 1984 dystopian future. It's a 2.5D side-scrolling brawler. Uh, we're scheduled to release in 2017 and we've got some uh, like dev diaries and content that we're slowly putting out. It's a small team but it's quite large in terms of what we're handling. Like We could definitely use more people but uh, it's, it's about five of us on the core team. Now where do you see yourself in the next two years? Or where would you like to be? Uh, I'd like to be in Sydney. Uh, for starters, but they've got opportunities and more people that I know out there to, uh... It's more of a hub, I guess. Yeah. Audio industry, audio industry. Yeah, yeah. Film, I guess, as well. Yeah, just any sort of media production out there, it's a good place to be. It's also more of a central hub to Australia. Yes, uh, yes. And, uh, I'd like to have a bigger studio, uh, yeah. with more stuff in it, of course. Now, last question, um, you helped me write a, a blog recently on people wanting to start out to do podcasting. Um, what advice could you give to someone wanting to be a producer or a voice actor or start out as an engineer? What, um, what's the basic advice or any steps you can mention? Uh, this is something that I think a lot of people forget the higher up they go, but it's that you're going to be comparatively bad to other people when you first start out. And it's important to remember that the people you compare yourself to might have been doing this for 10 or 20 years yes. and that they all started at a, a low point as well and they built their way up. So don't go out and buy a $3,000 microphone. Start small and just just practice. Put in the time. Talk to people. You can connect with others in your industry that are higher up and just read and learn and no, just work your way through it. There's no, there's no quick way around it. All right. Well, listen, um, firstly, I just want to thank you again for your time. Uh, if anyone has any questions, just read the links and follow the links after the interview below the uh, in the comments section here. Thank you once again, Daniel. Thank you very much.